Hai Timothy. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you for coming in. Today is our episode five. Yeah, our episode five of this uh, Microsoft Word. All right, today we're going to talk about actually six already. Lah. We skip one, ma, remember? Uh -huh. We skip one already. Uh, we skip one, time, but uh, by sequence, this one is still the five, right? <laughs> Uh, this is how we did last week really styles oh today yeah we are huh? doing the, the oh yeah 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 collaboration sorry sorry don't worry it's oh, okay God. i think this is just most of no problem yeah 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 <laughs> so today our topic is about collaboration using microsoft word where uh if let's say say we have a project that we need multiple people to work okay, uh oh maybe the music can yeah sorry uh, okay, like I said, uh, uh, sometimes when we are working on certain project, project or paperwork or proposal, we need more than one people to participate in the input of data content and so on. Uh. Right, so, or maybe we have uh, different subject matter experts uh, involved in that and they will do the writing on that. And uh, different, maybe in, in your in your training manual, you have a module one, two organized by somebody else, three, four organized by somebody else. So you want to compile all this content into one single document. So how do we do that? Huh? So this is what I meant by uh, collaborating between uh, users of Microsoft Word. Huh? Okay, so let me just share my screen. Second. Uh, Okay, good. So uh, we are going to use a feature in Microsoft Word that is, uh, can I say underrated? Uh, there's a lot of people do not know that they even exist okay, in Microsoft Word, which is called the outline view. Outline view. Uh. Now, if I just turn on the Microsoft Word, you notice that every time when you turn on the Microsoft Word and you get a new document, you are already in the page layout view. So in Microsoft Word, they have a couple of views. So if you look at the number of views here, they have five altogether. Reading mode, that means this one is not actually for editing, it's for reading. The one that you are always in is called a print layout, where you can see the edge of your page. Okay, then you have something called the uh, web layout, where you won't see the edge because web page, mark, no edges. Right? And then outline and also draft. So today we are going to talk about outline. How are we going to use outline to do our work? So before I go into the actual exercise, uh, I just want to introduce outline uh, to you. So whether you like it or not, every time when you use the outline view, the first line that you use here, they are already giving you the first level. They call it level one, level one. And if you learn Microsoft uh, Word styles last week, if you were here last week, we talked about the styles, right? So we have level one, level two, level three. So in this example, Level one is actually coincide with heading one. If we have level two, then we have heading two. They will use the headings for each of the level. So if you study this, uh, if you study this, see whether you like it or not, the first item here, this is the icon in your first level. So the first level here will show first level. Okay, and they are actually heading one. So there are buttons over here that can bring it down or bring it up to move it to add or to minus. This add and minus is just to collapse and expand, to collapse and expand your, your, uh, to collect your content. Then you have the arrow and the, the double arrow. So what is all this? If I put the arrow here, that means it actually says demote to level two. La. There's a keyboard shortcut, la, alternate shift right. La. Uh, alternate shift and right arrow to go down. But not necessarily I want to do that now. We can actually also use the mode to body tag. Body tag means it's the content. It's like what we use like normal. In this case, you call it body tag. So if I put in here, this is okay. This is my level one title. Level one title. So when I press enter, they will give me another level one. Another level one. So 
if you want to move it down to the next level, you don't have to do like what they say, shift alternate right arrow. No, you don't have to do that. You can just press tap. So on your keyboard, if you just press tap, uh, you will go down to second level. You see now, it says here level two. Uh, sorry, level two. Okay, so it's, it's up to you whether you want to use the arrow to click, go to level three, level two, or level one. You can click the arrow or you can just press tap. So if you use the keyboard shortcut, tap is to go down to the level two. In order to move up, you just press shift tap. So for those of you who are in programming, you already know all this, uh, tap and shift tap to, to move. So you can, but in this case, the arrow don't work. Uh. In, in programming, you can still use some of the arrow, but uh, a backspace or what. So this some backspace don't, don't really don't really do the do you a favor, but they remove it, you know. So you don't want to remove it. Huh? So you just press tap or shift tap. So this is is the level two title, subtitle. Uh, then you can continue. If this is going to be your content, then you may want to demote it to body text. So click that and you become a body text. You notice uh, the three different icon here. Three different icon. Okay, so this one comes with a plus symbol and it comes with a this one is a dot. This dot means it's no longer level one, level two, but it's a body text. Uh, body text. So I will just put it here uh equal to random of three comma five. Okay. So when I press enter, this is my text. Now if I were to click this one, right, over here, I press shift tab, it will go back to level two. Okay, so I can decide to minimize or maximize. So if I double click this one, it will minimize. Double click this one, it will maximize. I mean, not maximize, expand and, uh, what is that? Expand and also, uh, what's the different word of expand? Expand and, what was that word? Expand and collapse. <laughs> the name just don't ring this now. So you notice that we have level one, level two, and then I can shift tap to make it into level two again. After I press enter, shift tap, it will be level two. If I shift tap again, it will be level one. Depending on you want to continue with level two, second bullet or, or not. So this, this is how we, we can get this kind of data in. All right, so this is, this is called outline view. So a, a quick introduction of it. Maybe. Once you finish your work, right? Once you finish your work, you normally don't stay here. You will get out of this outline view. This is where you structure your work only. So once you are finished, you click the close. Then you are back to your page layout, your print layout. Your print layout will look like this one. Print layout will look like this. So whatever that you use as level one just now, when you click it, it tells you you are using heading one. Whatever you are using as level uh, level two just now, you use as heading two. Then when you click at the bottom here, at the bottom here, you use normal. Whatever that it uses body text is normal. Uh, what we learned last week when we talked about using heading one, heading two, and also the book normal, is all illustrated here. Okay, so let's take this information one step further. Let's take this information one step further. Huh? So you already know what's it, what is outline view. Lah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a situation now. Let me close this file. I have a file ready here called using outline. Yes, again, it will load. Okay. Now what I have done is I went into this view called outline view and I have typed out this number of topic, eight topics altogether. So let's just say uh, there are a few of us here, right? We have uh, Yap, Carissa, we have uh, uh, Chua also here, Cole is here. And who else? Timothy is also here. Okay, so what, what I'm trying to say is that we break our work into all of us, uh, all of us here. Plus me, there are six of us. So we have eight titles. So let's just say I want the title one, title two is going to be done by me. I'm going to do about the company. I'm going to do about the introduction. But let's just say uh, why compose, uh, the topic on why compose, we have a subject matter expert here. So let's just say, Timothy, you are the subject expert for this Y Compose. So what I will do is, I will send you this file and you will uh, put in the content. Now, I'm just simulating a situation. You don't really have to do that. Huh? So in order to do that, this document that I prepare, it's called the master document. 
All right, now I go back to my folder. You take a look. Huh? There's only one file here. It's called master and sub document. It's called, it's only one file. It's only one file, just one file. So what I'll do is I will expand this thing called master document, show the document. Right now, I will, I click on this Y compose, this paragraph level, this level, the third bullet for level one here. I will make that as my subheading, sub document. Right, so I will click this button, click. So now you notice there is a box around it. So what happened here is uh, you have prepared a sub document already. Then I will take the second to topic here. What is a compose file? So call you are the expert in this. What is a compose file? Then Carissa will talk about the what. How do you make a compose file? So create that. So I have three subject matter expert here. Then I have Chua who is doing hot or cold. Then I have Yap. Uh, WK yeah, doing this. Okay, so maybe I will make call do the last one as well. So create. So this is I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six topics here. Each and every one of you here have your own responsibility. So I've done uh. Now I haven't saved my file. Let me just show you the folder again uh. The folder now only have one one topic, only one topic, uh, only one file uh, uh. So if, if I save my file now, okay, if I go and click save. So this file is saved already. Eh? Okay, let's take a look at my folder now. I have how many files already? You see that? Just now it was only one file. And all of a sudden now I got another six files. Because I make them a sub document. I made them a sub document. Then I save my master document. Then I will have all the six other topics appear in this in this example. So what I can do is if this particular folder is inside a shared folder, maybe in OneDrive or inside my SharePoint, each and every one of you can go into that folder or that SharePoint folder. You will open up the file and you will start your work. Or you can copy it out first, do your work, then finish, you copy it back. You can also do that. So let's just say, lah, let's just say, Timothy, you are doing this thing called why compose? So what you do is you open the file. You you know where is the folder. You go in. You open the file. So once you open the file, it's going to take about. Okay, so I come down here. Press enter. Then you start to write. So I you you can put in some random text. Right equals to. Uh, okay, let me just put it back to normal. Equals to random. Then I put. Open bracket, you do 12 uh, lines with nine paragraphs. Okay, so when I press enter, oh, it doesn't work. Let me do that again. Oh, so it doesn't work. Let me see what happened. Huh? Ah, because of that. Okay. So it comes up. See? So we have uh, quite a number of texts here. Uh, quite a number of texts here that Timothy has compiled. Uh, these are all dummy text only. Uh, don't worry. Uh. It's all about video. Uh, if you have an opportunity, you go and read it. Uh. Uh, it's nothing so big deal. Uh. So you have uh, 12 lines and 9 paragraphs. Get a 9 paragraphs. I think more than 9 paragraphs. I think you did twice. This is... Uh, yeah, I did twice. Is it? That's why I got, got double. Anyway, uh, that's okay. Uh, this is the document that uh, Timothy has done. I think it's not okay. Let, let me just re delete all this. Uh. Because if it's too long, uh, later we're going to have tough times scrolling the screen. So let's just say only three paragraphs. Uh, Timothy, only three paragraphs. So when you finish, when you what, what do you do when you finish? You save. You don't have to work on the formatting. Uh, just complete the write-up. That's it. And send. If you have sub-document, just go and make it heading two, heading three, also never mind. If you don't want to do, also never mind. We can always adjust it later. So this is the document that Timothy has done. Save and close. Look at my master document already in. Whatever that Timothy has done on the spot, he saved immediately. I will get it. If let's say my file is open, I see here uh, when Timothy saved the file, boom, suddenly it appeared on my screen. It will come up. Right, so this is the collaboration that I'm talking about. So each and every subject matter expert who write this. They just have to concentrate on getting the uh, data, getting the write-up, uh, the article finished. Don't worry about the formatting. The formatting can be done via the master document.
So you just inform your members. Okay, please do not worry about the formatting. You want to put picture, go ahead. You want to do this, you want to go ahead and do that. Huh? So I have the next topic here. What is the compost file? So I go back to my folder here. What is the compost file here? Same thing. Huh? Right. So I'm going to put this on enter, enter. So I'm going to put it here. Equals to random. Let's just say I'm put a smaller number, la, uh, four comma six. Okay, so press enter. This is this is the content. And I also want to insert some picture here. So I insert, go to insert put picture. A picture from the stock image. Then look for something that is a plant. Okay, this one. Yeah, so that's the plant. It is smaller. So once you are done, you save it. Save it. So when I click close, you will notice that what is the compose file? Also enter. Uh, you can't see the picture now. Let's see what happens if you close it. Uh, you can see the picture. So inside the inside the outline view, it doesn't matter if you don't see anything here, but make sure you don't delete. Uh, make sure you don't delete. There's something there that you can see. So let me just see. Show for me. Okay, it's already done. Huh? So everything is already in place. Uh, so when you show, when you insert picture, everything, it will still be there. Just that in the outline view, you don't. Now, nobody will actually work in the outline view, except that you are actually coming up with the outline. And then once it's done, you will normally just exit. Come up here. Okay. So now you see, I'm not in the outline view now. Huh? I have my what? Is the compose file done? Now I'm going to the next topic. How do you make a compost file? Carissa, this is your topic. How do you make a compost file? Okay, this is your topic. And I'm going to press enter. Enter to so come here. So Carissa also do, do some uh, text here, random bracket. And let's just say you did five and four. Okay, forget that. So five paragraph. Each paragraph has about four lines, uh, about four lines. Uh, uh. So that's done. That's done. And again, Risa saved. Then close. Let's see what happened. How do you make compost file? Is also included. That means uh, if the manager or the person, the project manager, actually do this proposal, and uh, whenever that they give the work to other people, all the six people can start work at the same time. And once they finish within the stipulated time, like maybe one or two days, then the, by the third day, you have your full document ready. You will know who did not start because they haven't even inserted any text. You can also see who have done halfway and it's also coming up soon because they saved the file back into the folder. Unlike, uh, no, no, unlike, uh, what I mean is that in, uh, unless, uh, unless this person took a copy out, work on it, but haven't put it back. That means I'm not going to see any progress. But if they put it back, then we will see the progress. You get what I'm trying to say, yeah? So all of coal, then I have compost and soil. All this, you will put in the text. You are ready to go. All right, let me just quickly do this for hot and coal. Hot or coal. Okay, let me just press enter, enter. So here, I will put that equals to random between this one is a seven, seven paragraph with five lines each. Huh? Yeah, so this is the content. Again, I will save it. So I go to the next topic. After the hot or cold is the compost and soil. Compost and soil. Okay, press enter, enter. Equals to random. Equals to random. Between let's just say this time a bit more eight comma five. So I press oops, what happened? Eight dot five. Eight comma five. All right, this this is what I have done. Save and close. So the last one, which is composting and composting do's and don'ts. Let's go into this topic again. Composting do and don'ts equal to random between 
seven comma nine. Okay, that's it. All right, and we say so. All these people that I assign to do this work is com has completed their work. So completed, yeah, done already. Okay. So all I need to do now is if I do not want them to perform any more editing, I can go into this view outline, okay, show my sub document, and I will lock the document. So it says here you can actually read. Huh? Does it say anything? Oh, cannot, cannot, cannot zoom in. Okay, I'll read it out. It says that lock sub document links so that the future changes aren't propagated into the sub, not to the sub document. So you you are not going to be able to update this if I'm locking it. I'm not disabling it, no, but I'm actually locking it. Okay, so example, uh, I go back to my first title here. Let's see whether it works or not. Uh. So for the first paragraph here, I go to my, what is a compose for, uh, why compose? Okay. I put in a few more text here. So I put there uh, my German. Uh, I, type, I type in German. Uh, okay. okay. So I added already. So I say, let's see whether it actually enter into this. Uh, it does enter, right? Even though I lock. But whatever that I change here, okay, will it go to the document? Uh, let me just say this. Uh, Oh, it also changed. If something is not right, uh, it shouldn't change. Uh, something is not right. Did I lock it? Okay, it. Oh, I didn't lock. Okay, let me just do it again. Uh. It's not locked. Huh? Let's save this one. Okay, let me just try to change this one into blue color. Cannot. Okay, so this is not my document. I cannot. So if I go to the why compose? Okay, I highlight this. I make it. I still cannot change also because this document is locked. Okay, this document is locked. It says read only. So if I close this one, I reopen it. Take a look. Huh? Okay. I like this. I can't change because the document is being locked. The sub document is being locked. So I am not allowing. Uh, any more changes when the document is locked? Okay. Any more changes? So let's just say I give them a timeline until a certain period of time for me to do the proofreading. I will lock it. I don't want them to like halfway. I'm reading suddenly there's another doc, another paragraph up here. I I don't want that. So I can lock it. Okay, I can lock the document. But I can't do much to it now because the document is locked. All the formatting suddenly just disabled. Already. Okay, so I can unlock it again, then I can do a lot of things. So if I decided that this paragraph is not important, I'll delete it. Then I lock it again. All right. So okay. Do you want to save? Yes. So if I go back to this document now, why compose? That the paragraph is gone. Because I save and I go. So I come here, I want to do some formatting. This they are don't allow. So that at least you have some control over the document, sub document and so on. Okay, so once it's done and confirm you have read it, you have decided that you are going to go ahead with it, then you can unlock it. So what you do is you select that particular document and you can unlink. Unlink. Now this is what I normally do. Lah. I will not unlink the original document. I will unlink all this and save it as a different file and I will work on the formatting. So the original file, uh, I will also do the formatting if I if, if I want to play safe, lah, I will make sure that I will work on all the formatting done ready. Then I unlink so that in the event there are more changes coming in in the future, I will just unlock the document, then they can continue to update. Now, I will not be able to do selective document to lock. Okay, so this once I lock, all my document is locked. Once you see, I click here, this is not locked. Huh? If I click this, this is locked. You see the, the lock here. Right, come to this one, it's not locked. Right, so it depends on whether you are going to lock the entire document or just that document. So let me just take this away. 
So if I click here and lock the document, right, save. So what happened if I lock this master document? Nothing can be changed. Right? The whole document cannot be changed. Okay? The whole document cannot be changed. If I want to have only one document uh, that is locked, click inside there and unlock. unlock. So I click outside here, unlock. Then I come in here, I lock. I can lock it one by one if I want to. So it's, it's a, please try, la, uh, just go and click the lock and unlock to see. Uh, if you don't want this person to do any more update, you go to his document and do the lock. Uh, you can do that. Okay. So far, so far, what do you think of the feature? Mm. You think you can Kevin, handle? I got a question. Yeah. I, yeah. After you lock the, you lock, you lock the document, right? And the, mm. uh, the subject matter, for example, the the one who maintained the master copy also can't change the file, is it? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, it depends on where you lock, huh? Depends on where you lock. Okay, let me just turn it back on, huh? And expand this, huh? Depends on where you lock. This is your sub document, huh? This part, huh? This is your sub document, huh? So if you click okay. in this document and you do the lock, you do the lock. That means it's only this document lock. When you click outside, huh? You can still do like normal one. Uh, only oh. that particular lock part cannot. Yeah, only that particular. But but if you click outside, which is the master document, and you do a lock, then the entire document is locked. Oh, okay. So depending on which document you lock, uh, what I'm trying to say. Okay. So once you click outside here, even if you click inside here, you will see that uh, nothing can be done. Right? Because this document is being locked. But if you didn't lock the whole document, you only lock one of the document, you will see the padlock here, but you don't see the padlock in the second file. So when you click the second file, you can still work on the formatting. They also can do some addition, but only this first file uh, cannot. Uh, so Timothy cannot do any update anymore because Timothy is in charge of this month. So since Timothy's work is so nice already, I don't want him to do any more addition. I'll just lock his, keep it that way. Now, who knows, uh, suddenly he go and add more and so on. So this is already good enough. We don't want him to add anymore. We just say this is the best really. Then we will go and look for the second person. Now, if this is also good, then we go to the outlining here. We click in this document and we lock. So you can read through. So we don't want people to do any update while we are reading or something. So, can, can we understand? Can, so it can, can, it can be an individual. Can yeah, 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 please. Yeah, so so in other words, uh, for me, I only can open my sub folder on the Y Composer. I, I cannot open other people. You can, you can. If they are all oh. inside the same folder, yes, you can. Oh, I see. In other words, I can open and uh, make, uh, make changes and all that. Nah? Yes, yes, you can. Unless you already like, uh, we are all in a team. Uh, so if you want to help call to do the work, go ahead. Lah. Nobody will stop you. Uh. Right. <laughs> Unless you want to have security, then it's so, a different different thing. Right? So is there is, is there any feature where, where it shows the last update? Who who did the up the last update? Right? Uh that one is going to be under this one. You track changes. Okay. Otherwise, if somebody changes, makes changes so. on, on my sub folder, I want to know who did it. Right? Uh you can check for everybody. Lah. Track changes. Okay. And or what you can do is you you click your document and then you go to this thing called compare. Where is that word compare? There is something called compare. Are they here? The compare. Of course, I'm in the outline view. Like I can't compare. So let's just say I open up your file. Uh, y compose. Okay. So this is the original, right? Then uh. You have a copy in your laptop, la, let's say. Uh, mm. Then you realize that uh, somebody have made some changes here. Okay, They change this one to uh, gives instead of provide. Uh, they say gives. So now this document, I save as. Uh, I just purposely put an A in the back. La, uh, just to show the difference. Uh. So I have two files. Ma. So I can actually just go to review. Then I go to compare. I can compare and check whether the two version 
So mm. the original document is the one without the A. So I will go to the folder, look the, look for the one without the A, without the A. Then I'll go to this folder and look for the one with the A. So when I hit OK, uh, I will be able to know what are the changes. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, so great. don't play play, oh, I can check. Oh. <laughs> so as long as you don't overwrite your file, let's just say after you complete your file, you save a copy into your desktop. Uh. Just in case uh, something is wrong with the server file there, you can place it back. Uh. But also you want to protect so that uh, some of the paragraph may be not written by you. Like, so you can compare. And you yeah, can yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. So what yeah. are the changes? Usually a lot of lawyers use this stuff. A lot of those legal people, they use this. Stuff. All right. So now you see, uh, it's done, right? All the six document is ready. So I go into my uh, outline here. I Quit, huh? I come out. So I haven't done my work yet. So introduction, I haven't started writing. So I put here uh, equals to random. Let's just say my introduction is a very small introduction. So it looks like I didn't press enter just now. Right? Yeah, so this is my paragraph. So once I finish my work, huh, I want to generate what we call the table of content. Now, if you follow, follow through my session last week, we also did the table of content. Now, all we need to do just go to reference this one and choose table of content. There you go. The table of content is ready with all the titles. Now, the reason why they work like this because of the heading one, heading two, and so on. Then you see all the titles are there, followed by the page number. Okay, so now you can say, okay, every title uh, must start with a new page. So you go to the heading one, modify. And you tell them to do the paragraph line spacing. You tell them to put in the page break, page break before. So we hit OK and OK again. You notice that this is heading one, ma. So one title here. This is also another title, ma. This is another title. So introduction, one page like that. Another title, another page. Another title, another page. Every title will start on a new page. Now, because of that, because of that, my page numbering is no longer correct. You see here? Here's one, 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 two, three, three, four, four, uh, three, four, five. So I don't want to okay, right click this one or just click and update the page numbering. There you go. The page numbering now is correct. Okay, follow accordingly. Okay, so whatever that we learned last week about changing the style, style and so on, you know where to get. Lah. This is where you like POC one. Uh, this is your POC heading. You go and change uh, all the all the styles. If you want to change a different font and so on, uh, just go and do that. So usually, like I said, uh, once I finish my formatting, uh, okay, I will save this file and I'll save a copy. Now that copy, I will make sure that all the link is broken because I do not want to send out my final work uh, with all the link. I don't want. Okay, so I want you to take a look. Uh, I save my file now. Then I close it. Uh, then I close it. Uh. When I reopen this uh, using outline, uh, this is master document. Uh, when I reopen it, it will always give me the link. It will not give me the content. Okay, you see this one, the page one, page two. Right. It gives me the link only. It will not give me, it will not give me the content. So I need to do this every time, I have to go to view, outline, expand the sub document, then the content will come out. If I close it, then only I will see my content. So what I meant just now was, after I have done and I save my save my work with all the styles, right? Go back to the outline view. Okay, so you start to click on each and every every title here, and what do you do? You unlink it. Unlink. So I'll go to this title. I will also do an unlink. I'll go to this title. I will also do an unlink because this is a final product already, ma. No more already, ma. No more changes already. Final. I'm going to submit this proposal already. Okay, this is my let's just say a training manual. So my training manual done already. I don't. I don't want to do more more changes. So done, right? Done. So, but what I will do is I will not save this file as outline. I will save this file as. So 
I put here maybe the word complete. Uh, complete. So when I hit save, now I close. Uh, close. So the next one, when I open up the one which is complete, I will not have the problem of only the links. I hope. Yeah. There's no link already. So whatever Timothy, uh, uh, WKR, Carissa, Nochua, all of you are uh, making those changes, you realize something, this, this document won't change because this is the final proposal or final document that if everybody agreed upon, uh, this is what we have sending out. So in case there is a revise of that particular proposal, revision, somebody called us to do a revision. So we don't use this file anymore. We go back to this outline. Then we will call upon those who need to do the revision, do the revision. Then from there, we will compile the book again. And I will compile it into a book again, unlink, 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 unlink everything. Then save it as another one, revision two. Yeah. Are we okay with that? Yeah, yeah, great. great. Should have learned that long time so ago. If... <laughs> You see, this one uh, is usually very useful for those you know, university when you are given the group assignment. Its namesake is a group assignment, but you realize uh, one person will be the most kanchong person to do everything. Uh. The rest are uh, just chip in a bit, a bit, a bit and say, okay, I contribute. But at the end, who is doing all the typing? You can see by the language, actually. So if, if you see the language is very standardized from the beginning to the end, that means only one person is doing. That's what my lecturer told me. If I look at the pro, if I look at the final work, uh, it's just like one style of writing only, then I know it's only one person doing the work. Then they will ask who wrote this, and that particular person will get extra mark. The others will get lesser mark. That's what my lecturer do. Right? So he already taught us this, this thing in the class, but nobody used it. Uh. Nobody want to use it uh, because not everybody want to contribute inside that writing. Uh, and they say they want consistency. What consistency? Everybody should chip in their work and then the final person will do some, some editing and then that's it. So you, the lecturer will be able to see different style of writing. Then you will give the marks accordingly. And uh, so you ask who do this topic, who do this topic, who do that topic. So you have to, you have to Say lah, I'm the one who do it, I'm the one who do it, then they will give you the mark separately. Right? Even though it's a group. For the group effort, there is a mark. But for individual work, they will also give you mark. So on top of that group work mark, you have your own individual effort work. So that's that's what my lecturer do lah, last time. But nowadays, I think all the children know about this, you know, in school. But I don't think they do lah. They, they want to use it. And lecturer now, nowadays ask them to submit the work online with you. So they have to do online collaboration like that. Somehow you end up one person doing the work. Unless it's being enforced. But Timothy, are you referring to when you were studying or what? Yeah, I mean the we we yeah, even when we're studying, we do do, do this I uh, want our dissertation. Even right now we, we do write. Uh, what you call, we write uh, sort of uh, notes uh, for, for our seminars and all that. So, uh, I mean, the outline thing was good, uh, I think. At least uh, help us to yeah. format things and all that. Mm. Indeed, it, it does, it does uh, speed up our work and uh, everybody can contribute at their own timing. We don't have to wait for one document to mm. finish, one person finish, then send to another person. Or we, we separate this document and then we collect them in, in together. Uh, we don't have to do that. So that's great. Now, if you start off the document, now I'm going to start off the document with a blank document now. Huh? Yeah, it's a blank document now, right? So I want to create something called the outline view here. Okay, I'm going to create sub document. Now, it's already there. So this one is a uh, about video. So this is the, the introduction. Okay, put there, I put the introduction. So the introduction is by me. Okay, then I will flip this one over. I say I want to take the topic from another document. So I don't have to click here and create. I know that, let's say, Timothy, you have already done your write-up. So you already sent it to me. So I can just insert your document. 
I can insert that document that you have completed. So I go to the this one. So I have a master sub document. You see, I can take your document right away. Why compose? So I take your document, I put open. Okay, so I click yes. Huh? So I bring it in. So that it will become a sub document. Already. So not necessarily it must start from master document and distribute out. If let's say these people started writing already, just accept whatever they have written. Go ahead. You can bring it in and then you can consolidate the formatting after that. Don't worry about their formatting. Just bring it in and you can redo all the formatting using the styles that you have here. Okay, so just instead of create, you insert, you insert the document in. So after this topic, I got another topic. So I go and insert. I look for why, uh, why compose and uh, what is a compose file. And it comes in, I click yes, da, 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 I have another document. Right, this is the, what is the compost file. You guys understand? So it, it can be a ready-made document that someone has, some of your team member has already started writing. Then you just bring it in. If they say that I, 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 I added another topic, uh, no, let's just say in the team, I say, hey, I added another topic, I send you the file now. So you just have to insert it into that document. But you must know where to insert. Uh. Read them first. Where it's suitable, just insert it inside. So you can either you use the create or you insert. Right? Create or you insert. Are you okay so far? Yeah. So if I click this document now, you see why compose? Huh? I click this document, I can click split. So what does this split? Split the document content into a separate document. That's what it's trying to say. So I think, hey, this document is good, uh, but I want it to be a separate file. I don't want it to be, not to say don't want, I want to like junction out uh, after this, this part here. I want to like do elaboration on this particular file. So I can split it. Okay. So what happened when I split? Like nothing happened also. Let's go into the folder and see. Uh, this one is what compose, right? Is there a white compose? No, it doesn't have a white compose. Where is that split? Supposed to be a different. Uh, yeah, we are already in a different document anyway. Split ready. Okay, now I didn't save on uh, the one that cannot see that. Uh, I split ready. That's why it's it's a uh, it's a different file. Okay, so I didn't save this one. Uh, so let me save this one first. First, let me save this one as test about video uh. about video so let me just click split why is not happening uh? right okay it's not happening don't know why but uh the the, the thing is it says here is that you are splitting the sub-document content to a separate document. All content beyond this section point uh, is placed into a new document. So you split it into two documents. Really. That, that is what you're trying to say, but it's not happening. Right? I'm not sure why this is not happening, but it happens to... Uh, will, will, will it give you the same... Uh, what, what will be the file name, supposed to be? Uh, why compose? Oh? Maybe it's because it's. But why compose already got a sub, sub uh, file already. Unless it unless it's in a different directory or different. No, it's the same. same. All right, never mind. Uh, oh, this be, is because, seldom used. Yeah. No, oh, because uh, yeah. because just now when you insert, you insert it from a different directory. Like. Um, yeah. is it from a different directory? Wait, uh, let me, let me click insert. Uh. I use back the same directory. Uh. Because you, you say you want to insert something that's already done. Uh. Uh, that is one. Uh. The, the same thing, uh, the master, master and sub document is the same, same place. Uh. Okay. I got the file from the same place. 
But anyway, uh, like I said, uh, it's seldom used. A lot of people will not go and split the document because this is a work, work in progress thing. Uh, right? But this, this create and insert is already good enough for us to, to compile the document already. Okay, so let's just say you are working on a project tender or proposal. Uh. Okay, so you have a document that is uh, your, uh, a good document where you do all the calculation, uh, right? All, all your tendering pro product, uh, how much is it already? So take that, put, put it right here. Then the proposal in front is that the technical specs of it, everything. Then come to the come to the engineering part of it. Then come to the costing of it. Now you, you can have different people preparing that and put it in together. So that that will be like uh, you can finish a proposal within uh, one two day, given the tender given to you and uh, or proposal that you are supposed to come up with. This is going to be. Uh, very easy. Lah. That means the person who holds the project management, project manager position lah, will have to come up with this proposal really quick. Lah. So the team member will have to contribute. Lah. So this is where I say the feature called collaboration. Lah. So you can just go and do a testing on this. Lah. Test it out. It's, it's interesting. It's very interesting to, to, to try it out. Lah. When I first got to know this data, I said, wow, well, it's like we can finish uh, uh, any book, uh, any training manuals uh, in just one day. Mm. Because the moment I send it to the subject matter expert of that particular module, they write, uh, they just do the writing. Uh, then I just wait for them to finish, compile it into module one to module 10. Then I take another day to, to look through, read through, uh, and then format at the same time. Done. In two days, I can complete my, my manual. Okay. So maybe I have a lot of different different topics. Like you guys, you have the clustering, la, you have the cloud, la, you have this so many things, right? So uh, some people will write about this topic and the structure. So if you are being brief on how to write, how to write the manual, so everybody will follow that style. They just put in the content. So finish ready, let's compile together. That's how great this document, uh, master and sub document is. So just remember, uh, it's hidden inside here, uh, view, inside the view here called must, uh, outline. But when you enter the outline, you will not see it immediately. You have to show document and then you will uh, expand the document if let's say it's not expanded. Lah. If it's not expanded, it will show something like that. Mm. Got it? Right, so that's it for my this week sharing. <laughs> Master and sub document. Do you guys have any questions? Short and sweet. Hey, no, 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 no. No, no, I you're, got back you're here. I think before you. you finish. Um, oh, okay. Let's go. You know, I think a lot of the young you people don't know this feature. Yeah, actually, this one is good, uh, not even for collaboration in the sense in the sense that you're working with different people. But even if you're doing it on your own, uh, like for example, yep. sometimes we have different courses. Uh, cost one, cost two, cost three. Uh, cost, uh, cost number one, I have uh, about six topics. Right? Cost number two, I have mm. uh, almost similar type of course, but I got actually another six topics, but two of the topics are the same. Right? So basically, I just mm. plug from there. Right? Yes, it's just like a Lego like that, lah. just yeah, yeah, on top yeah. of each other. Mm. Yeah, it's a good idea. That means every module is one file. So if they say you let the customer pick and choose the module, just done, one file. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you are doing the training, uh, they say, I only want to learn this, 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 this. Mm. So you just pick up this topic, 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 add together as one file. Great idea, yeah. I think Ko is very excited now. <laughs> uh, Ko, are you? Hey. Lab lab testing, guy. Uh. Lab guy. You do? Yeah, you do your lab testing thingy. Uh. <laughs> that, the lab guy that, uh, that Ko has been hanging on to, I think this can be very good. Instead of doing it yourself, you can ask your team member to help to do it. 
And once they are done, you just insert it into your master document. Mm. That's that's that will be easier for you. Yep. Does uh, <clears throat> PowerPoint have such a feature? Unfortunately, no. Only Microsoft would. Okay. However, Microsoft PowerPoint can do this. Okay, let me show you something. Uh, let me share my screen. Am I still sharing? Yeah, I'm sharing. I'm still yeah. sharing, right? Yes. I'm still sharing. So let me just go to. Uh, okay, let me just look for the file first. Uh, I have the file here. Outline. Do I have outline? outline. Okay. I have this document, which is in Word document. You take a look. Huh? So in PowerPoint, you can prepare your content in your outline view. Uh, you can prepare your content in Microsoft Word outline view. So it's like agenda, this is the subtopic. Then mm. you have your learning about garden company. This is the thing. So you can do that. Once you finish ready, you just save. And close it right if this file is open then you cannot uh, import it into powerpoint so what you can do now in powerpoint now this folder let me try to remember that okay so let me just get out of this i get a new file okay so when when i want to bring in the document from there i will remove everything like, huh? i just go to new new and then i say slides from outline you see it even mentioned the word outline no? slides from outline so if I click this with outline, I can collaborate between Microsoft Word and PowerPoint now. Lo. So I just go into this webinar, to Microsoft PowerPoint, other files, then this one, gardening outline text. So I insert it. The next thing you know, all the content that you see in the Microsoft Word earlier now appear in your text, in, in your PowerPoint slides. Holy smoke. But of course, content only. Lah. You don't expect the design, everything to come in. Lah. So what you do is you select all this and you just click reset. Reset to follow the PowerPoint template. So don't want them to follow your Microsoft Word template. Just what I mean is the team design. Lah. So you just reset mm -hmm. it so that it will follow the current team, team design. So now you can just click this on everything. Yeah. Okay. Done in nice. the GFI, right? Wow. Amazing. So just prepare it in your online view. So you have brainstormed with your, your, with your colleagues. Okay, slide one, what can we put there? Slide two, what can we put? Just the content, mm -hmm. just the text. Then once it's ready, save it and just pop, pop it over. Amazing. Yeah. It's, this it's is inside the here. I, it's inside. This is the method I've been using for many, many years. Good. So from the outline. That means you have been using outline. La. Yeah, yeah. I've been using outline. If it is if I'm starting from scratch, uh, of course, uh if we are using uh, someone else uh, template or reference, then of course it's a different story. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Not not able to uh, but you can do this though. You can go to view. Outline view. Right, copy and paste this to your Microsoft Word. But you have to be very diligent mm -hmm. maintaining your point point format. Uh, uh, yeah. If if you start putting information in text box object and all that, then uh, this thing won't work. Right? <laughs> uh, we, we are not supposed to. We are not supposed to what do you call that uh, misuse the what do you call that the, the text boxes given because PowerPoint is a very guided thingy. La. So if you click here, this is mm. one placeholder. There's yeah, another placeholder. This is placeholder. the heading, uh, then this is the details. Uh, yeah. then, so if then you go all to the, the master, formatting uh, will work very well. Yeah. Uh, if you go to the master, right, you will notice yeah. that the master document. They have the master placeholder for Correct. you to work. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, there are people who do this. They click the new slide. The next thing they do is they highlight and delete. Actually, you don't need to highlight and delete. So you just click layout and click blank. 
<laughs> it's easier. Yeah, but they don't even know there was a blank. They just highlight and delete. And then they start putting in their own text boxes. I don't know what's so big deal about their own text boxes and that text boxes. Uh, so if we if uh, the user do it this way, then your uh, summary and your outline will not work, I think. Yes, yes. So yeah. so I, I find that if I start understand. with uh, outline, I can uh, quickly break sections. I can break uh, focus into different sections quite easily. Uh, then only I will start to look for um, uh, like graphics and all that to support those lines. Uh, that, that is my normal yes. workflow. Uh. All right. Uh, been it should be that way. Or... That, that's the yeah. correct way. That, that is the correct way. But you will see a lot of youngsters nowadays, they don't follow. They consider this as old school. Even my, mm. my, my, my daughter will say this is old school. Yes, old school when it comes to the design, but come to the, to the convenience sake. Uh, this is very convenient for your future updates and so on. If you are using the text box yourself, then the update is not going to be consistent. No? Let's just say you decided to change the font, then yeah. you have to go through all your 50 slides. But if you use this to update the font size and font color, then it will be so easy. Just, just uh, change it very quickly in the master. Yeah. You need to know how it behaves, you, don't la, use... you know. No, you, you need to know la, how it behaves. Because once you understand how it behaves, uh, then you will appreciate uh, uh, the structure way of doing it. Uh. No, no, nowadays she don't even want to use uh, PowerPoint anymore. She use Canva. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of people use Canva. Yeah. Yeah, my children also use, use Canva. Canva. Do, she use Canva to do presentation in school. <laughs> <laughs> so PowerPoint is like losing... Has, is at the losing age la, when Canva has so many templates, so beautiful, colorful templates for them to just yeah. and choose. Animated also very, very, uh, very oh, nicely uh, animated. Yeah. Very, very intuitive, uh, intuitive design available for them. So it's like the, uh, Canva know what they are thinking. Eh? <laughs> um, I, I think Canva have created, uh, like you say, like it's a lot of templates. Um, you you like whichever format, then you just feed data into the format. No? Yeah. And then drag the picture, drag the picture into the existing picture, replace with it. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> much easier. Right. So I think that's it for today. Uh, unless you have any more things that you want to discuss, we can stay and discuss. Otherwise, uh, 